Kansas, gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes. And churn homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. It's the best part of Dorothy's dream. Today on Around Kansas, we'll learn about a new must-read book about Kansas. The Waterville Opera House, which was built in 1904, and Kenny Starr, a 2015 inductee into the Kansas Music Hall of Fame. Next, we'll meet this week's From the Land of Kansas Business and see how Davis County became Geary County. Then, we'll finish up with a poem about cow towns. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Around Kansas, brought to you by Tarwater Farm and Home. Come on by, we'll treat you like family. Welcome to Around Kansas, I'm Deb Beisel. I couldn't wait for our monthly feature on books and music to share this one with you. This is an absolute must-have. What a Kansas treasure this book is. Railroad Empire Across the Heartland, Rephotographing Alexander Gardner's Westward Journey. This is by Jim Chereau with the photographs by John Charlton. Now, John Charlton has been my friend for years. He was with the Kansas Geological Survey. So John has covered virtually every square inch of Kansas. If you go to the Kansas Geological Survey's website, you will find some of the most stunning images of our state you'll ever see. So John has just covered everything. And he became aware of Alexander Gardner's trip across Kansas in 1867. And he decided years ago, I think it was the 1990s, that he wanted to go back and re-photograph some of those things. He started out with a grant to the National Endowment for the Humanities, and when that agency lost a lot of its funding, well, then it became a hobby for several years. So that hobby has come to an incredible fruition. Now, Alexander Gardner, some of our viewers may recall, was portrayed, remember when we went and interviewed my good friend Doug McGovern at the Kansas Sampler Festival last year? Doug is a photographer from Hutchinson who has re recreates Gardner himself and is really into the stereographic images. So you learned a little bit about Gardner on that episode and feel free to go back into the archives and watch that again. But Gardner was, was hired by the Union Pacific Railroad to go through the, um, go along the railroad's path basically and photograph the scenery and the communities and the people and that helped sell people on the railroad. It sold investors, it sold people who were going to buy tickets, who were going to move, who were going to, who were going to settle along the railroad and, you know, build homes and businesses. So it was all about promoting the path of the railroad. So these images are absolutely incredible. And he went back and as best he could recreated um, some of those spots. There's a great one in Hayes, for example, famous photograph of the stagecoach in Hayes. Hayes was just, Hayes City was a few months old when Alexander Gardner was there. And of course now it's a business district and there's just a historical marker to show where that great image was taken. This this is a have-to book. Um, I, I cannot say enough about what a beautiful work it is, how much you're going to enjoy it. When he went through the photographs, not everyone made the cut because, you know, there's, you just had to stop somewhere. And you're going to recognize so many familiar places. There are going to be some that you've never seen before, but you're going to love it. You're going to absolutely love this book. You better go get it right now. We'll be right back. This hog is head over hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. 
our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. Tall Grass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tall Grass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. This segment is brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Good morning, I'm Frank Chafin. This is Around Kansas. You may recall that we were going to uh, visit opera houses all around this great state of Kansas. We started at the Jayhawk Theater, which is in restoration. Well, a lot of opera houses around the state have been restored. Some of them didn't really have to be restored, and one of those is in Waterville. Now, Waterville itself was established back in 1868, and they established it because, obviously, uh, it was a water stop for the railroad that went through there, and it was also named after a town in Maine, also called Waterville. Well, of course, back in the 1860s, 70s, 80s, that's when, of course, there were many opera houses that sprung up across the state of Kansas, and, and that was the form of entertainment that there was at that time. Well, the Waterville Opera House is one of the more spectacular ones, and uh, let me digress here a little bit. My wife Linda and I were part of the Dale Easton Players for many years, and we were invited to play at the Waterville Opera House a couple of times. We did The Drunkard once, and then we took one of our musicals called The Shaboom Boy there. And let me tell you, when we were in town, we were, we were treated like uh, visiting rock stars or something. Uh, and it was a fun place to play. Now, let me tell you, the opera house itself, you walk up seven and a half steps into this opera house. It's all nice and white, and you walk in, and you see a wonderful ceiling in there. It's a flocked ceiling and a huge sandal chandelier right in the middle. And then, of course, all the seatings, and then a big stage area. Well, the acoustics in there are wonderful because the people that built the opera house made the corners rounded in there. So the acoustics just kind of roll all around in there. Uh, the Waterville Opera House uh, is not one that was transformed into a movie house. It has remained an opera house for over 100 years. It was built in 1904. Yeah, long time ago. Well, during the summer, there are several groups that still visit there. There's you know, a lot of traveling groups, almost like it was back uh, uh, between the 1860s and the 1920s. Now again, I had an aunt uh, that traveled with the Ted North Players and played the, the Opera House many, many years ago, long before I was born. But anyway, also uh, in Waterville, across the street from the Opera House, is a restored hotel, the Waterville Hotel. And it's wonderful to walk around in there and, and look at uh, the rooms the way they were. And then there's a restaurant there that has a fantastic menu. So if you go to Waterville for a show, be sure to go over to the hotel and see it too, and then have dinner in the wonderful restaurant. You can find out more about the performance schedules. Uh, you can Google them, the Waterville Opera House, and make sure it's Waterville, Kansas, because otherwise you'll get Waterville, Maine, and I don't think they have an opera house. So anyway, be sure to Stop at the Waterville Opera House, and again, like I say, we're going to be looking at other opera houses all around this great state of Kansas. So for now, this is Frank Chafin saying, hey, join me on renradio.net for the oldies every Saturday from 11 to 2, oldies of the 50s and 60s, renradio.net. And until then, I'll see you somewhere around Kansas.
Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour-on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Dr. Frank Lyons, a physician here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. As one of the only standalone stem cell centers in the U.S., we use your stem cells as therapy for arthritis and some autoimmune diseases. I'm Dr. Andrew Poe. Here at Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center, utilizing the latest technology under strict protocols, we're able to harvest your stem cells from your own fat to treat a variety of medical conditions. The best part about it is, it's a same-day surgical procedure and requires no general anesthesia. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Around Kansas, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Welcome back to Around Kansas. You all know that music is my love second to history. And I want to talk with you a minute today about Kenny Starr. Now, probably a lot of you know Kenny or, or remember when he was recording. Kenny grew up in Burlingame, Kansas. And he was born with a different name, though, Kenny Treby. And then he later on became Kenny Starr. Now, when Kenny was only nine years old, he was fronting his first band, the Rocking Rebels. And as a teenager, he played clubs as part of a pop act, Kenny and the Imperials. Now, he switched to country music in 1969. And then he won a talent contest in Wichita. A promoter invited him to appear on a forthcoming show with Loretta Lynn and Conway Twitty. He got a standing ovation. That's when Loretta Lynn suggested that he move to Nashville, and she gave him a job with her road show. With her support, he recorded for MCA from 1973 to 1978 and had a U.S. Co country top ten hit with The Blind Man in the Bleachers. Now, I don't know about you, but I remember that song really well. Really poignant, touching song about a blind man whose kid was on the football team, like second string, and he was just always in the bleachers waiting for his kid to get into the game. So not only did that make the country charts, it made the Billboard Top 100 charts at well. He had further success with Tonight I Face the Man Who Made It Happen, Hold Tight, Slow Driving, and Me and the Elephant. He has continued in the music business as a producer and a jingle writer. Kenny lives in Nashville now. And he is one of the 2015 inductees into the Kansas Music Hall of Fame. So we're um, just so pleased with Kenny's success. I talked to him on the phone the other day, and he's so proud, so humbled to be inducted into the Kansas Music Hall of Fame along with uh, people that he admired and many of whom he's played with as well over the years. So in the midst of your busy day, look up Blind Man in the Bleachers and give it one more spin. We'll be right back. From the Land of Kansas is a trademark program that helps Kansas businesses grow, produce, process, or manufacture Kansas products. Let's meet Coca Dolce Artisan Chocolates, Wichita's most exquisite chocolate store, located in Bradley Fair. Owner, operator, and master chocolatier Beth Tully creates small batches of her preservative-free confections by hand using the finest chocolate from around the world and all natural ingredients. 
Coco Dolce features a variety of bittersweet, milk, and white chocolate truffles and bonbons. The store is also home to Wichita's only wine and chocolate lounge, where guests enjoy eclectic wines paired with chocolates in an intimate setting. For more information, visit them online at www.cocodolce.com. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. American innovation is being driven in places you might not expect by people like Brent Hayek, an Oklahoma family farmer who recently set a world land speed record in a Ford Super Duty pickup truck powered by renewable B20 biodiesel. Advanced performance is here now, putting America on the fast track to more jobs and energy independence. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. The Kansas Wheat Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Around Kansas, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Good morning, welcome to Around Kansas, I'm Deb Beisel. When the Kansas Territory was, or was organized into counties, I think in 1855, I think there were 33 original counties. One of those was Davis County. You don't know where to find Davis County? That's because it doesn't exist as Davis County anymore. Now we know it as Gary County. When that county was organized, Jefferson Davis was the Secretary of War. And of course, honoring the uh, politicians, important people, you know, was just the way you named counties. Washington County, for example, it's really obvious where that name comes from. But Davis County became a little bit controversial when Jefferson Davis, for whom it was named, went on to become the President of the Confederate States of America. So the good folks of Davis County decided they needed to change it since most of them, of course, had supported the Union and much of what would become that uh, county were made up of Union soldiers after a certain point. So in 1885, it became Gary County, named for John White Gary. Now he was much more acceptable. Gary had been the last Acalde and the first mayor of San Francisco and most importantly to us, he was the third territorial governor of Kansas. Now, he was a big guy. He was way over six feet tall, Pennsylvanian, and not afraid of very much. But being the territorial governor of Kansas was a tough job, and it was a pretty scary job. He actually fled in the middle of the night with his uh, brace of pistols and said, you know what, I'm done with this. It was a pretty scary place to be. So he goes back to Pennsylvania where he will become a pretty big deal in the Civil War. He's a, a general and later on he'll become the 16th governor of Pennsylvania. So when the good folks of, of Davis County were deciding who they needed to name their county after rather than Jefferson Davis, they picked John White Gary. 
Now, if you go over to um, Junction City to the Gary County Historical Society, they've got all kinds of information about this, plus the other rich things that happened. Of course, Junction City, so named because that's the junction of the rivers there, the Republican and the Smoky Hill, which of course make the car. So uh, it's harder to find a more significant place in the geography of Kansas than that specific point. Junction City, of course, was home to another um, favorite person of mine, General J.E.B. Stewart. Stewart actually laid the cornerstone for the Episcopal Church in Junction City when he was a lieutenant in the Union Army during the territorial period. So many great things to find and do in Junction City, so we hope you get over there. I was visiting with the ladies from the Gary County CVB the other day at a tourism event, and one of the things they told me about that I had no idea, the duct tape and cardboard boat regatta that they hold each year on Milford Lake. So if you've got some engineering prowess and a lot of optimism, you too can make a boat from cardboard and duct tape and compete in the regatta. They have, um, you know, some pretty small little entries. On up to, they told me that the K-State Engineering Department actually used a semi to bring their entry over one day. So I think that's one that we're going to have to put on our calendar for this year. We'll be right back. Carwater Farm and Home is a nearly 40-year-old local family-owned business. Clothing for work and play, seeds and feeds, boots, toys for the kids, the tools you need for around the home and farm, and a service department to keep them in top running order. It's a big store, so when you have some time, take some time to see what they have for your farm and home. Tarwater's everyday pricing is like others' sale prices. When you need it, they've got it. Tarwater Farm and Home, 4107 North Topeka Boulevard. is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Around Kansas, brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. Go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Howdy folks, I'm Ron Wilson, Poet Lariat. The cowboy really came alive in legend at the time of the great cattle drives, and the goal of the Texas drovers was to get to Abilene. This poem is in honor of the first cow town. One of the first cow towns the world had ever seen was the little community known as Abilene. It all began after the Civil War here with demand for beef from the western frontier. A livestock dealer named Joseph McCoy helped bring about the American cowboy. He saw Longhorns in Texas running free and he knew what an opportunity these could be. McCoy looked for a place with grass and water abiding where he could build a big railroad siding. He traveled through Kansas on a railroad route west in search of a town that would suit his request. And when he got to the city of Abilene, he found the place which he had foreseen. It became a cattle shipping point henceforth for Texas drovers bringing cattle north. Thousands of Longhorns came up the Chisholm Trail to the city of Abilene to meet the rail. The money flowed and cowboys got wild until the local folks got riled. So in time, the cattle trade moved west in the Texas cattle rancher's quest, but in the history of the West, the name still resounds. Abilene, Kansas, one of the first cow towns. Happy trails.
Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff. Progress. Powered by Kansas farmers. Welcome to Kansas. Gateway to Oz. Under the rainbow, this is where it was. Hollyhocks and red ripe tomatoes. And churned homemade ice cream. Let me tell you, Kansas is more than tornadoes. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream. We're the best part of Dorothy's dream.